Welcome to Tile Trends by Tile Club, where we explore all things home design, lifestyle, and the transformative power of tiles. I'm your host, Lindsay Flukiger, and today we're joined by the incredible Jennifer Kizzee. From her early days in Veracruz, Mexico, to her successful stint in sales and marketing in the U.S., Jennifer always had a passion for design. In 2016, she embraced this calling by launching Jennifer Kizzee Design alongside her husband, John. Focused on blending aesthetics with real life functionality, she crafts spaces that both parents and children can enjoy. Based in Lee City, Texas, Jennifer brings modern coastal vibes influenced by her tropical upbringing, while also juggling the joys of raising four lively kids. Jennifer, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. Likewise, we can't wait to get the discussion rolling and learn a little bit more about you today. So let's dive right in. Your Moroccan style bathroom retreat using Tile Club's Spanish Siesta tiles is simply stunning. We've reshared it many times on our social. We oftentimes have people comment on it and ask us all about the design, the tiles. Could you share with our listeners how you approach this project and why you chose those particular styles? Yeah, thank you. I, I'm so excited to hear that, you know, it's gotten very popular. So I really wanted to create a space that was very vibrant and, you know, just serene and tranquil. And the Spanish siesta tile was just the perfect fit because, you know, all of the rich stones and all the beautiful, you know, patterns, they, all of those, you know, elements combined that really set the foundation for this Moroccan aesthetic. Let's talk about your design aesthetic. What inspires you as a designer? Well, as you can tell by my accent, I am not from around here and I am uh, I'm from Mexico and Southern Mexico. And so I'm very influenced by, you know, my Hispanic or Latin roots and my love for organic and natural, um, you know, elements and things like that. So, you know, myself and my team, we're really striving you know, to create spaces that, you know, evoke, you know, warmth and vibrancy. But the one thing that is super important for us is to make sure that they're also livable and functional spaces for pretty much any family. I love that. Yeah. Functional is so important. I feel like once we got through the pandemic, you know, we really kind of came out of that, um, whatever that was. Um, <laughs> like that it's still behind us now. <laughs> yeah. I always call it the blip. It was this crazy blip in time, but yep. we came out of that really like, you know, combining spaces or really looking how we can make a ki kitchen also function as an office or um, yeah. a room or whatever. And so functionality, I think has really come to the forefront of design over the oh, last yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't it's agree nice. more with that statement. And I always say my clients, we know that we can make any space beautiful. We, we got you covered, but the function aspect of it has to be there hands down. Yes. Well, speak, speaking of functionality, designing for families, you're a mother to four active children. So I can relate. I have two have four children <laughs> and a stepdaughter and it's chaos, but I love it. How do yeah. you balance the demands of motherhood with a yeah. high career in interior design? Okay. Uh, so I personally, I really love and enjoy, you know, both roles and, you know, a lot of the, the, the things or um or the uh the designs that we bring together are you know inspired by our everyday living and that just kind of sparks you know fuel in, into my brain and my team's brain on how we can make the spaces for our clients even better <clears throat> because we're right in their shoes we know uh, how you know the family functions and what their you know standard needs and then from there we can just customize it you know to their specific needs mm, that's wonderful are there any specific um designs or advice that you would give to mothers who are looking to create a more functional home yeah definitely i would say that as designers as professionals and and we understand uh, all the products out there, right? When maybe just a client knows uh, a few things that they get to see at the store, but, you know, getting materials um, incorporated into the spaces that are easy to clean and zero maintenance and all those things. I think that really speaks, is a love language for any mother in the world, because if I can have a beautiful space, but I don't have to worry about every single aspect or, if, you know, people are going to be drinking wine on my brand new white sofa, right? Like how can we make it better? 
by you know bringing performance fabrics or um, a scratch resistant you know flooring if kids are running around and all those things right we know what's out there and it's our job right to put it in front of our clients so they can really enjoy their lives enjoy their families have a beautiful home without all the stress that could come with it right it's so true so true we actually just installed a new backsplash in my kitchen and I've only ever had a backsplash in one other home in my life. And so <laughs> it's such a treat for me because my kids are messy. We have dogs um, and it has just changed the entire space and made me feel more confident. Like this is going to be easy. I can just wipe yeah. it like it's fine. And it's, it's amazing how something so simple can simplify your life. Yeah, absolutely. I had marble at some point in my life, it, it, even you know, myself being a designer, I, I still did it. And so I used myself as an example, like what not to do in your kitchen. So <laughs> well, I'll always discourage anybody from using a natural stone if you're not that person, you know, that is not going to maintain it unless you absolutely, you know, love the edging and all the natural patina that comes, you know, um, later on. Um, but yeah, uh, function is number one for us, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Great insight to Marble. I'll try to remember that when we were replacing countertops. <laughs> Just call me. Just call me. I'll talk you out of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to set up a consultation with you. I love yeah. it. Um, so now as someone at the forefront of interior design, what are some current trends that you're loving and are there any that you just don't care for? Yeah, well, personally, um, I love... Um, Transitional style, uh, I would say that coastal or modern coastal, it's dear to my heart, um, knowing that I grew up in southern Mexico by the water and a very tropical state, 110 degrees almost every single day, uh, year round, it's super, super hot. But when you look at our portfolio, when you look at our work, you will see that we're heavily on ocean colors, uh, organic elements, uh, I love rattan. And funny enough, you know, right then has been so, so popular and uh, cane webbing and all those, you know, elements that make, you know, a piece of furniture or any other space, you know, a lot more organic. And it is very heavy and I think it's here to stay. Um, a lot of the trends that I'm seeing personally is the use of a lot of natural um, stones, a lot of natural materials like um Moroccan tile is one of them. Uh, we've seen a lot of terracotta influence, you know, salish tiles, and uh, you'll see a lot more limestone, you know, flooring, you know, throughout kitchens, right, which is not necessarily your most typical, you know, material to use in, in, in an in interior space, right, you will see it more exterior. So bringing the nature or bringing the outdoors indoors, it's truly what's trending right now, but I do believe that it's here to stay for a long time. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, and I know as a company, we are so big on sustainability in ways that, you know, we can make the living a little bit more functional, but also organic and sustainable. Yeah. And I love everything you said about just like the terracotta look, the zellige tiles and things like that. It really does bring in those natural elements and helps connect you with the outdoors. Yeah, absolutely. Good and agree more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always interesting to hear different perspectives on design trends so to follow up with that are there any trends that you would love to see go um well I mean I was um kind of you know when when the whole farmhouse you know the salad you know came out and people took it to the chicken wire stage I couldn't wait the day it will go away uh, I think there's elements, I know you're laughing, but I know there's elements that we love and um, and they're great, you know, for, you know, country homes or like Southern veranda, you know, type of, you know, how, uh, type of houses or style. Uh, but I would say that um, over the top of Scandinavian is just seems a little bit too cold for me. And even when we design, you know, homes or we work with clients that are building homes, you know, 20 plus, you know, or 25 foot ceilings, it seems very cool. And I'm all about the warmth. And, you know, if, if I take a, a color, you know, spin wheel, I'll always be gravitating towards the warmer uh, type of tones. And you will definitely see that reflect in the work that we do every day. So there's a lot of, you know, ways to to bring that, you know, warm and togetherness and um, and that cozy feel, you know, it has to be there. 
So I would say anything that is over the top, way too modern, too contemporary, that feels cool, I will probably run for the hills and, you know, find my safe space in a very warm type of home. Wonderful. I love that. I'm the same way. I love being able to walk into my home and feel the warmth of different textures um, and and colors and kind of the richness that really is inviting when people come over and it yeah. just it when you walk in. So yeah, Absolutely. I got a giggle in the ear. Chicken wire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, there is some, some people just took it to another level and, but uh, we're happy to take the chicken wire down. They can yeah. take the cow. Yeah. The picture cows, you know, pictures down. We'll happily do it for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, how funny. I love that. All right. So now that we've heard a little bit more about your own um, personal aesthetic design trends that you're enjoying and those that you'd like to see go, um, can you tell us? So let's imagine that maybe one of our listeners out there is feeling a bit tired of their current decor. Perhaps they yeah. have some chicken wire on their walls. <laughs> Um, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So I know like, you know, the tackling a house or trying to change the feel of a house can be daunting because, you know, we don't know where to start. And I'm sure, you know, somebody out there relates to this, but, you know, I'm sure you've been at Home Goods or Target and spend $500 in a bunch of decor. And then when you put it in your home, it feels like nothing happened. Uh, my advice is to start small. But focus on one room at a time. Instead of sprinkling a bunch of candy on 100 cupcakes, sprinkle maybe on one or two at a time. Uh, that's how you will see the most impact. So, you know, start with your bedroom, start with the living room, and then just focus on those. And then, you know, once you get those taken care of, you can move to the next one and you will feel a whole lot more accomplished, you know, knowing that you you were able to make those changes right with without spending a ton of money but really making it uh, more intentional by just focusing on one space or two spaces at a time it always works like a charm because uh, i've been on the other side like you know going to a bunch of stores and coming with a bunch of bags and then i put it up and i'm like oh my gosh where did it go right like it looks the same <laughs> So yeah, that would be definitely my advice and the, probably the most practical and cheaper one as well. Yeah. Oh man, you nailed it. I think every woman has gone through that where they've gone to, like you said, <laughs> home kids or, you know, wherever, gotten all the things and then you're going, that's it? Yeah, I know, right? Maybe I do need to call a designer, oh. but you can definitely do it. If, you know, to all the listeners, you can do it. Just try to just focus on, you know, room by room, just tackle it room by room. In other words, uh, that will probably, you know, pay off uh, sooner. Do you have advice for like, let's say they are just going, oh, this whole house needs an overhaul. Do you, what's your advice on like which room to start? Do you have a favorite room or one that you think is easier to tackle? Yeah, I always start by just asking questions, you know, to our client, to our potential clients and uh, understanding how they want to live. Do they entertain a lot and what their priorities are? Uh, I would say, let's just start there, like getting to know them. And then from there, we can, you know, really dial down to what are the spaces that need them attention like right away and what can be more of a phase two. Um, typically, uh, just working with a lot of families, it seems like the, the living spaces are in the kitchens are all always the most important spaces because one is truly where you spend the most of the time right uh and two you know that's what gives you the the bigger impression when you invite people over that's where everybody likes to congregate anyways so i would say that um you know really thinking about you know how you know you want to use the space but what's important to you specifically um it's the number one conversation but but then Again, you know, it seems like, you know, typically those open spaces are always uh, number one on a lot of a lot of our clients list. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense. I know from my home setup, it's a pretty open floor plan um, on the first floor and you open the door and the first thing you see is the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> yes. This is like if my kitchen <laughs> is not together, then nothing is. Yeah. So like that's that focal point. That's the gathering place for a little neighbor friend. Yeah family yeah that's absolutely one thing that I've seen uh, recently or or well we're also designing them that like that way is that we're creating an additional kitchen or a service kitchen 
some other people call it a chef's kitchen. And that's just uh, right behind, you know, your primary you know, kitchen space. But that's where all the dirty dishes go. And they're all behind walls. So you don't have to tackle them every time somebody wants to you know, visit and come over. Uh, they can always be tucked in in the back and then you'll get to it when you get to it, you know? Yes, I have seen that trending. I've seen it um, called a scullery. And- yeah, that's also another name for it. And I think it's genius. Um, it kind of releases, you know, the pressure of, you know, just keeping your house neat. And, you know, we just got to tell the kids that, you know, they, use, they have to use the, the kitchen in the back, right? <laughs> and then leave all of the, uh, the, the, the other kitchen just for the show. Mm-hmm. That's a brilliant idea. I love that. Functionality again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly always number one functionality because uh if you feel like you're in a museum it's probably not a good thing yes yes <laughs> we touched a little bit on your upbringing and your roots and I would love to expound upon that and hear just a little bit more about how growing up in Mexico has shaped you as a designer as well as your personal aesthetic yeah well I mean I, I don't know if you've been in Mexico um yourself personally and I'll invite you we have to you know, go down, check out Mexico City. There's a lot of, you know, great states and outside the touristic, you know, places, you know, there's just so much culture and so much richness. Um, so we, growing up, I was really, truly surrounded by, you know, colors and elements and, and just a strong, you know, sense of community. And all of this, you know, you bundle all that together and just, you know, profoundly influenced, you know, my design aesthetics. And I, I truly, you know, I love incorporating, you know, warm liveliness and just a sense of, you know, togetherness and, and community. So here, you know, in this country, it's just so uh, fast paced, but down there, everybody's chilling. They work super hard, but there's a lot of time, you know, for, for family and, you know, to go and enjoy, you know, outdoors. And that's, that I don't feel like that just happens in Mexico. I feel like in in a lot of um, Central and South America, the entire culture, it's very similar. Uh, Family comes first, works comes next. And uh, here it feels a little bit backwards, right? But we still, even with all of that, you know, we still have to find that, you know, middle ground where you get to balance it all. And it's it's, it's easier. you know, just to say it, right? Because I feel like we all struggle with that. But anyway, back to your question, uh, all of that, you know, it really made a, um, a a huge, you know, dent on the way, you know, we design the spaces and how we tackle them. And how can we create an environment that just lets you decompress after a long day at work? So there you have it. <laughs> From a true Mexican, right? Yes, I would love to go. So let me know next yeah. time you're heading that way. Um, yeah, I experienced fun. that similar kind of um, lifestyle when I spent a summer in Italy. And oh, I'll never so forget. Funny. Yeah, we, my uh, roommate and I were in Rome and we had just landed and we're kind of like bustling and oh, there's the Travis Fountain. And then there's this, <laughs> we went and found this little cafe outside and got got a bite to eat. And as we're leaving the um the server goes, no, no, no. What are you doing? And we're like, we, we're, we got things to do. We want to go. And he's like, no, you, you must stay. Like you need, you need <laughs> breakfast and here's some bread. And he's like, this is to relax. You need to like, stop because yeah. he's, we had been there for 15 minutes. And I just experienced yeah. that for an entire month and it really changed my life and yeah. uh, for the better. And I wish that our, you know, country and and yeah. our communities would remember that like slow down you have slow to down. you're not in a hurry so okay. absolutely yeah no I love that and I did uh read a little bit about that that you know they expect you to enjoy your meal and they have your coffee like that's you know almost a requirement or it's the expectation right that you're gonna go and really take it all all day but we're just more like, let's go, 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 because we got five more, you know, places where you want to hit. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, I, I love that philosophy of, you know, just embracing it, taking your time to breathe. And, and again, you know, decompress. Uh, and then <laughs> you, we get to go, you know, back to reality, you know, at some point. Uh, so we have to enjoy it while we can, for sure, for sure. 
well, just even exploring different projects that you have um, in your portfolio, I can see the warmth and kind of the come relax and, and just enjoy. Like I see that in your aesthetic and I, I love that. I hope there's many women listening and lots of moms who just really need to hear. It's okay to slow down yeah. and have a space. Absolutely. Yes. If I can sit down and drink your coffee on your couch, on your white couch. <laughs> <laughs> on your white couch, yes. Oh, I love it. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I have one last question for you. Can you tell Absolutely. us what projects you're looking forward to um, for the rest of 2023? So we just completed a vacation uh, home. Uh, it's going to be um, a feature on Airbnb pretty soon, uh, starting September 1st. And I am going to tell you, we had a lot of fun uh once because we got to do um, a lot of coastal vibes you know and boho combined <laughs> you have to check it out um so if somebody calls me and say jennifer we're gonna give you five more houses on the water uh they're all gonna be modern coastal seriously that will be like an early christmas for me so i'm looking forward to that we're in the works of you know talking to other um homeowners that have a secondary vacation home they want to you know spruce up uh, furnish and make it really fun for rental purposes so i'm very excited about that hope it works out so yeah that's what gets me, has me very excited right now that's wonderful oh well thank you so much for sharing all the thank wonderful you. things going on for you and your design firm we're wishing you the best of luck and just appreciate your time today Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope to get to do this, you know, pretty soon with you. Sounds great. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a great day.